exciting time. Uh, I don't know how many people buy a $2 million facility uh, in January and close it by, by late March. So, um, yeah. yeah. For me, childhood mentoring was a, a very critical thing for me. My parents divorced when I was two, and uh, my mom remarried several times. I moved 21 times during my school years, and, uh, and so I had real inconsistent male role models in my life, but there was a couple of coaches and, and uh, city leaders that kind of saw something in me and then uh, did some investing in me. And so I, Valor is really just an expression of, of uh, how those relationships impacted and kept me from getting into serious trouble. And now we're trying to replicate that. So, yeah. What keeps me up at night running our organization in this facility? How much time you got? <laughs> uh, having 17 employees who are largely paycheck to paycheck, people who, who are deeply dedicated to this community center, deeply dedicated to the bowling community and to the restaurant. Uh, we have uh, Elaine who has been managing the restaurant for 41 years. Uh, she has three daughters that work in, in the restaurant. So we've got bowling mechanics and front desk people and, uh, and uh, the, the pro shop, which uh, services hundreds of bowlers uh, uh, regularly. Um, all that is uh, a, definitely a negative impact. That is probably what keeps me uh, up at night more than anything is uh, the employees and how this is impacting them. And then actually if you come with me this way. So this is the front desk. There is a lot of drawers of shoes back here, like a lot. <laughs> My name is Kessie Miller. I work the front desk here at the rec. Since the rec closed, I have been focusing on school, been fixing up things around the house because I live with my two sisters. Um, but yeah, it's been not that great. <laughs> what are you going to um, Speech language pathology assistance. It's a mouthful. I really like helping people and it will enable me to work with kids or adults. And um, I really like helping English second language learners and I like to help people with their reading and their enunciation. And I'm also really interested in helping people um, who are deaf, who have just recently obtained their cochlear implants. And so they would need to um, have help learning how to speak. Um, I've had several um, people who have been in the bowling industry for years and years and years from when they were little kids tell me about um, what it used to be like, like how they used to have um, people pin setters, like human pin setters, not what the machines do. It's really interesting to see the camaraderie between bowlers. And since other bowling alleys have been shut down, people have been coming from miles, states away to bowl here. <laughs> the community is honestly nothing like I've experienced. I didn't realize how big a deal bowling was and how tight knit of a community it is. Bowling has always been a part of my life ever since I bowled in Albany at the old Albany Lanes. They seen that I was um, a junior bowler and that uh, I was needing a job and that was my very first job was working in a bowling alley. And could you describe in layman's terms exactly kind of what these pin machines do? When the bowler throws the first ball, the sweep comes down and there's a time delay and the table will go down and feel for pins and it'll pick the pins up and the sweep will run and sweep off the pins that have fell and fallen over and then the table will set them back down the machine will, will return to its uh, second ball cycle at that point. I uh, got offered a job at Cellmet and I was working there uh, up until April which I got laid off from Cellmet and I was off work for about oh, th four, maybe five months, I got a call from Tim Davis. He asked me if uh, I'd be interested in coming to work for him at uh, the rec, because I was, had a history of working on bowling machines. And so I came to work for Tim, working back here in the back at the rec. Lo and behold, I get hit 
uh, with another layoff again. I was fortunate enough this time I didn't have to be laid off. I was able to land a job back in flagging again. I have worked here a long, 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 long time. Must be 40 years now. I know. I always joke around and tell people I started when I was 10. But <laughs> that is not true. I always considered myself really lucky because I genuinely have always liked coming to work every day. And the thing here at Bowling Alley, you have people that come here sometimes every single day either to say hi to Don or to share a laugh with Billy. I feel like even though they're my customers, I've made some lifelong great friends. Even though it's been all this time now, it still seems kind of surreal to me. I mean, you would think after all these months that it would have set in, and it has set in. I, I understand everything that's going on. But I've just been always thought it won't be too much longer. You know, it won't be too much longer. Unlike some people who are, tend to be a little more down and out about it. I am too. You know, we can't can even get together with all our friends and families over the holidays. But I just know it's gonna, stop and I know that this place under Tim's tutelage and the men of valor I just foresee all their dreams of this place happening and so that makes me excited and I have something to look forward to um, I'm old so I'm getting close to retirement but um, I, I just hope I I'm gonna be here when they're the recording studio is open and they're, they got the music going and they got their classes going and they've got their mentoring all intact and the building is finally all the way done. Like I said, I hope I'm here <laughs> to see all of that happen. I have a pretty big vision for, for what we're trying to accomplish and it's, it's very rewarding work. I, I'm, my first 25 years on this planet was spent fairly selfishly uh, on myself and, uh, and, and since then uh, growing in, into uh, the deeply committed guy. I've been in this Salem Kaiser community for 35 years and um, not everybody is maybe a glass half full guy like I am but uh, it's been difficult uh, for a lot of our employees, a lot of the community members to struggle through this, uh, both, not just from a financial perspective. I think what keeps me going, uh, if I think about it, it's probably just how the relationships and people investing somehow in me uh, got me to this point. So, yeah. <laughs>